Hello and welcome to another TLC tutoring accounting lesson. Uh, today we're going to be going over closing entries and post-closing trial balances, the last few steps of the accounting cycle. Now in the past I have made a closing entry video, however there have been some changes to how we usually do closing entries in academics, so I thought it was important for us to kind of take a look at those. Um, previously in the other closing entry video, you would have seen that we had a four entry closing entry system. However, recent textbooks have come out with a two entry system and that seems to be the direction that most accounting courses are going. So I wanted to review how we are going to be doing closing entries with only two entries rather than the old traditional four. So first step, let's take a look at what closing entries are. Um, so far you've gone through your whole accounting cycle, you've done your journal entries, adjusting entries, financial statements, and it's at the end of the cycle, the end of your accounting period. Um, in this case, it's the end of the month, January 31st of 2000 something. And what we need to do is we need to prepare our books for the next upcoming period. Now, in order to do that, we need to make sure that some of our accounts listed here now have a balance of zero so that we can start fresh. Uh, so in order to do this, let's talk about the difference between permanent accounts and temporary accounts. Uh, permanent accounts are those that continue on from period to period. Uh, for example, cash. Cash, no matter what you're doing, you're still going to go to sleep at the end of the month with 47,000 in your account. You should wake up the next day with 47,000 in your account, assuming that no major transactions occurred. So that's an example of a permanent account. Um, another example would be accounts receivable, the amount that your customers owe to you. Um, just because it's a new month, a new year, new quarter, it doesn't mean that the amount that your customers owe you go away. So that's also a permanent account. Um, now let's take a look at an example of a popular temporary account. Let's do fees earned. Uh, fees earned is temporary, and the reason why is um, whenever we're taking a look at fees earned or expenses, we're looking at those for a particular period. So our focus with fees earned is what were our fees earned for this period. Now that this period is over, we are going to want to wipe clean that $10,000 in fees earned so we can start fresh next period. Um, and you can also think the same as expenses. Um, when you're making your budget, your budget is focused on one period. You're not continuously recording your expenses for 10, 20 years. You start fresh every time you redo your budget for whatever budget length you use, whether it's a year or a month, just so on and so forth. So uh, the general rule is your permanent accounts are your assets, your liabilities, and your capital. Now keep in mind capital is a little bit of a strange one because if we go down here to our drawing, the amount that Christopher Knowles withdrew from the company during the year, that drawing account is actually a temporary account. So uh, just to kind of recap here, assets, liabilities, and the owner's capital account are all permanent. The owner's drawing account, revenues, and expenses are temporary. So let's go through these real quickly and just kind of put permanent and temporary next to each one so that we know what we're dealing with. So supplies is an asset, that's a permanent account, it does not go away from period to period. Prepaid insurance is permanent, accounts payable is permanent. Um, unfortunately, um, if we go ahead and uh, wake up the next morning, it's a new year, but our debts are still there, so absolutely permanent. Wages payable is permanent, unearned fees, the amount of services that we owe are still permanent, and capital is permanent. Now temporary, your drawing account is temporary, and all of your expenses are also going to be temporary. So keep in mind, once we go ahead and take our closing entries and post them and have a new adjusted trial balance, then you'll notice that all of those temporary accounts should be zeroed out at the end. All right, so let's do our first closing entry. The purpose of our first closing entry is to close our revenues and our expenses to capital. So let me just kind of make a note here for you. Close revenues and expenses to capital. So that's the purpose of our first closing entry. So let's start with closing revenues. 
Uh, currently, fees earned has a credit balance of 10000 That makes sense because income and revenues have a normal credit balance. So in order to close out fees earned and bring it to a balance of zero, what would we have to do in our closing entry off to the side? We'd have to do the opposite. We would have to debit it for 10000 So let's debit fees earned for that 10000 figure. Now you'll notice once we go ahead and record that 10,000 journal entry and post it to the ledger, which we don't have here, but once we post it to the ledger, you'll notice that the balance in that account turns to zero. That's now gone. We had a 10,000 credit. We just debited it for 10,000. That amount is gone. Um, let's continue on now that we have our revenues. Let's do our expenses. We need to close out these expenses as well. So let's close out those expenses. Notice they have a debit balance currently. In order to close them out, bring them to a balance of zero so that we can start fresh next accounting cycle, we're going to have to do the opposite. So let's credit wages expense for 700. We are going to credit supplies expense for 1200. Next, we are going to have to credit rent expense, 3,000. Insurance expense for 500. So now we have a balance of zero in wages expense, zero in supplies expense, zero in rent expense as well as an insurance expense. Uh, normally if we had a balance in this utilities expense account we would have to zero that out as well but for this month we didn't have any entries that affected utilities expense so it already has a balance of zero. We don't have to include that in our entry. Now when you take a look at these two you'll notice that they currently do not balance and as we all know our debits must always equal our credits. So let's figure out exactly what we would have to plug in in order to make those two sides balance. So in this case, we have a debit to fees earned of 10,000, and we have credits of 700, 1,200, 3,000, and 500. So in order to find out how much we're going to have to plug in, let's go ahead and take our, the total of our debits, 10,000, and let's minus out all of those credits that we have so that we can find the difference between the two sides. So when we find the difference between those two sides, we see that we are going to need a credit plug of 4,600. Now, if we add up all of our debits, which equals 10,000, and all of our credits, which it will now also equal 10,000. So the question is, what are we going to call this number? Because we can't just have a number in an entry and not label it. Well, remember that your first entry is to close revenues and expenses to capital. So this 4,600, is going to go to our Christopher Knowles comma capital. Now notice when we went ahead and debited the fees earned and credited our expenses, those zeroed out those accounts. But this 4600 to Christopher Knowles capital, that is a credit to that capital account. In order to credit a capital account, you're actually increasing it. So Christopher Knowles Capital is actually now going up by that 4,600. So let's go ahead and show on this post-closing trial balance that we are slowly creating what effect that has. So 4,600 plus 50,000, we now have 54,600. And this is officially now a post-closing trial balance. All right, you'll notice now when we posted this entry in its entirety, it did change our bottom line, but they still equal. That is the beauty of closing entries. We're not giving up that double entry accounting system rules. Now, remember when I said this was a two-step closing entry procedure? We still have one more closing entry, um, and that second closing entry is going to be to close drawing to capital. Now in our case, we don't have to do this step because Christopher Knowles did not withdraw anything during the period. However, I wanna show you how this entry will look like just in case that you end up getting it on your homework. 
So in this case, it is still January 31st. We have one more closing entry. Now remember, Christopher Knowles drawing, that is a contra capital account. So with these contra capitals, they don't have a normal credit balance. They actually have a normal debit balance. That's what makes the contra in a contra capital account. So Christopher Knowles drawing, if he did withdraw anything during the period, he'd have a debit balance here. Now ask yourself, how would we close out drawing if it has a debit balance? Well, we'd do the opposite. We'd have to credit that account. So let's start with there. Christopher Knowles comma drawing, and we'd have to credit for whatever amount is there. So once we would credit that, we'd then have a balance of zero. And what do we have to close that to in order to make this balance? It's going to be to the owner's capital account. So let's go ahead and plug in that debit and let's talk about what effect this would have on the post-closing trial balance if we did in fact have to do this closing entry. So Christopher Knowles capital is now being debited by the amount by which Christopher Knowles withdrew during the year. So Christopher Knowles capital is a capital account. So when we debit it, we're actually making that account go down. So whatever we debit here is actually going to make Christopher Knowles capital decrease by that same amount. And once you do that, once you close out your drawing to zero and you decrease your capital by the amount of those withdrawals, this again should always balance. All right, so if you go back to our prior closing entry video with four entries, you'll notice that this is quite a big difference between the two. So I encourage you to kind of compare and contrast and see what's different. Uh, no longer do we use income summary. Uh, now we're simply going ahead and closing all of our revenues and all of our expenses all at once to capital. Now one more thing I wanna point out just to kind of help everything come full circle. Um, when we do our fees earned and we deduct out these expenses, you'll notice that that 4,600 equals what we had for net income. One moment, let me pull up our income statement so you can get that visual. All right, so here was our income statement that we did in a prior video for CK Company for this month ended January 31st. You'll notice here's our fees earned, all of our expenses, our net income is also 4,600. Now, going down to that statement of owner's equity, You'll know that Christopher Knowles, of course, the capital, it's going to increase by contributions. We already recorded that during the accounting cycle, increase by net income, and normally it would also decrease by withdrawals, but Christopher Knowles did not have any withdrawals. So where does that 54,600 come in? 54,600, it now should equal ending capital. Closing entries helps us do the accounting side of what the financial statements actually showed. And in the end, when we take a look at that balance sheet, we should be seeing the same thing on our balance sheet as what we have on our post-closing trial balances. All of our assets, liabilities, and that ending capital figure that we came up with. And now CK companies can start fresh on February 1st. All right, so I hope this video helped you. If you have any questions, please be sure to leave a comment down below. Um, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to these videos. We do try to keep them updated with what's happening in these um, academic textbooks. Um, and in the meantime, until we post a new video, happy studying. Thank you for watching.